Welcome back to my series on the lore and real world inspirations of the Korean MMORPG Mabinogi. Today, we'll mostly be taking a look at the continent of Lu and finding the real world origins of the towns and dungeons of the game, and discuss some of the mythology that makes those areas relevant. We'll also be talking about the Battle of Moitara in a bit more detail than last time, since we danced around it so much in my first video. I recommend enabling subtitles, as there will be many names that may not sound like you would think. The very first thing to mention is the name Alu itself. In-game, this is the westernmost continent of Aerith and was the first continent released. In the real world, Part of Northern Ireland was once a kingdom called Alu, and later Ulster. Modernly, most of this region is still part of the UK, the only exception being Donegal County. Speaking of, let's start in Tir Hanel. Tir Hanel is another name for Donegal County, and the two share some interesting features. Donegal County and the in-game Tir Hanel both lie to the north of their respective landmasses, and while it's a little hard to tell in-game, the world map would imply that the game's Tir Hanel is in a mountainous area. Our real-world Donegal is also fairly elevated. If we look to the southeast of the game's Tir Hanel, we find Dugold Market and Castle. Donegal County doesn't contain a castle bearing this name, nor did I find any castles in Ireland with it, but Donegal County has well over 10 castles in its borders. Another interesting parallel between Donegal County and Tir Hanel is that both are noted to be much more traditional than other regions. The game's Tir Hanel is said to be inhabited by the direct descendants of the Parthalons, and is isolated from other major cities like Dunbarton. This mirrors how its real-world inspiration is isolated from the rest of the Republic of Ireland, and is a place where Irish is still commonly spoken. This region contains both Albi and Kier dungeons. Albi seems to be taken from Alabaster, while Kier means dark. Next, we'll take a look at Mabinogi's Dunbarton, in the passage Osnasale. This city most closely resembles the real world Dublin, but may also be slightly inspired by Cork. Both Dunbarton and Dublin are roughly in the middle of the eastern coastline, and both function as something of a hub city. Dunbarton is the place where you'll find most players killing time or running shops, and has several NPCs, while Dublin is Ireland's largest city. Slightly to the east of Dunbarton lies Port Cove, a small port town that offers ship voyages to Belvast and the continent of Eria. The name is drawn from Cove, a town on an island inside of Corks Bay, which was the last port of call for the Titanic, so be careful if you're chartering a ship from Karasek or Karas, I guess. Dunbarton also lies near Math and Rabbi Dungeons. I couldn't find exact translations for either of these, but Math may get its name from Ma, meaning extensive, cunning, sad, or bitter. Osnasale, I can't figure out. The best translation I can get is that Osna means to sigh or to groan, and sail can mean dirty or impure, to be very large, or to have a view. So all I can think of is that maybe it was mangled in translation but was meant to say something like Cliff with a Breathtaking View. The track that plays in this area is called Osna Awesome Sail, which makes a little sense if I'm correct. If you can find more information than this, please let me know, because I've been leafing through a dictionary for hours now and cannot make sense of this one. Quick side note before we move on to the next city. I have found two different sources on how to say Bangor. One claims that the R is simply non-rhotic, and comes out something like Bangoa, while the other source claims that it has a hard G and a hard R, coming out something like Banjur, which I hate. I'm not sure which one is correct, and I haven't been able to track down anyone to help me get this sorted out, 
So if you know, please let me know. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to be referring to Bangor as Bangor. Anyway, venturing further south in game, we reach the Gyrock Hills, Bangor, Morva Isle, and Port Kian. Gyrock Hills draws its name from Gyrock, which is a hill close to the real-world city of Molinger. Bangor's name is drawn from, well, the city of Bangor. While I couldn't find any mention of mining in the real-world Bangor, the game's version's red stone is probably inspired from this image on the city's Wikipedia page. Morva Isle is harder to pin down, but Morva seems to mean near the sea, and so the name would translate to Seaside Pass. The only source I found for this one was a baby name website, so suffice it to say I'm a little bit suspicious of the localizers on this one. An interesting point is that the real-world Bangor was put on the map by a monastery founded by Saint Comgol, and the game's version contains a priest named Comgen, tasked with building a church in the city. Gyrock Hills also has a dungeon, Fio, which translates to tree or woods. Headed west from Gyrock, we find Senmoy and Avinmaka. Senmoy is the site of the game's versions of the Battle of Moitra. The real-world version of Moitra is quite a large area, and the battles themselves were located in two very different areas, one close to the city of Sligo and the other closer to Kong. The site closer to Kong has more in common with the game Senmoy, geographically speaking, with both being close to large lakes. The game's Avinmaka draws its name from Navin Fort, which was once known by the same name. Tradition holds that this was once the seat of royalty in pre-Christian Ireland, and the capital of Olu. It's a vital location in the midst of the Ulster Cycle. The site itself is ancient, with artifacts dating back to circa 4000 to 2500 BCE. It may not be a direct connection, but Avinmaka also has a notable church in the ruins of an abbey near Kong, close to the site that lines up with Mabi Senmoy. Senmoy also contains Paka, dungeon, which means sin and is styled like a tomb. Now heading to the far western reaches of the map, we find the capital city of Tara and the vineyards of Blago. I can't find an exact parallel to Blago, but there is a long history of winemaking in Ireland, with archaeological finds suggesting that wine had been around since roughly 500 BCE. Moving on to Tara proper, it seems to get its name from the real-world hill of Tara. There are a few theories about what the word Tara means, but a couple possibilities are sanctuary or high view. Tradition holds the area was once the seat of the High King of Ireland. Modern day, the site has a few notable structures, but the sprawling city and stately castle we find in the game is nowhere to be found. Instead, the site bears a church, several ancient burial sites, and the Lea Fowl, or Stone of Fate. The burial mounds bore religious significance, and the stone was said to give off a roar when touched by a true king. The Lea Fowl also appears in Mabinogi as something of an altar that allows the reincarnation of gods though it bears very little resemblance to the real-world stone. Looking back north, we find Telltown, Carb Valley, Obni, and Schlieve Colleen. Carb Valley derives its name from the real-world Carb River. The valley itself has a river running through it, making the connection extremely obvious. Schlieve Colleen translates roughly to the mountain nook, which, given that it's a small pass through the mountains, makes plenty of sense. Obni also borrows its name from a real-world body of water. Lokni, which is the largest lake in Northern Ireland, notably the game's version of the lake, contains a reference to the Loch Ness Monster, as the need spawns in the lake here and resembles many popular depictions of the cryptid. 
Nearing the end now, Belfast is Belfast. The real Belfast isn't separated from the rest of Ireland by sea, but it is separated by political border. If you look at the two locations, the real world Belfast and the game's Belfast have very similar geography along their bays. There are three last places I want to touch on. Shishnakta, Moimal, and Skuabtina. Shishnakta simply means snowy hills, easy peasy. Aaron's Moimal is the home of the Fae and is a land that is literally flowing with milk and honey. This makes sense as Moimal is sometimes translated to Elysium in English. In real world mythology, Moimal is part of the other world where gods, Fae, and etc. make their home. It ties in closely with the next location. In Aaron, Skuabtina is an island and home to the Lord of the Sea, Mananuan. The mythical version is a little bit different though, as the Skuabtina, or the Wave Sweeper in English, was a self steering ship. Notably, the in game item, the Wave Sweeper, is a stone tablet that depicts a ship. Mananuan becomes very important in Generation 23, so we'll dive into him then. With our impromptu geography lesson done, let's talk briefly about the Battles of Moitera. I touched on the topic in my Generation 1 video, but I feel like a more comprehensive understanding will make things more clear in the future. I'll explain the game versions the best I can, then talk briefly about how it compares to the real-world myth that the battles are based on. In the game, in so far as I can tell, the first battle of Moitera was fought between two sides. The gods and the Parthalons on one, and the Fomors on the latter. This battle would have been very far in the past by the time the Milesian came to Eren, so details on it are somewhat sparse. This would also be where Nua lost his arm. The second battle was fought between the Tuahade and the gods against the Fomorians, led by Fomor King Baylor of the Evil Eye. Baylor would fall in this battle, slain by Lu, and Cycle would become the new king of the Fomors. This battle is what caused the craters that let her send white plains, as the wizard Jabkel cast a spell that rained moon rocks onto the battlefield with devastating force. In the mythical battles of Moitera, the first battle was fought between the Tuahade and the Fearbolg, earlier inhabitants of Ireland. Ultimately, the Tuahade win the battle, claiming Ireland. Nuaha loses his hand here and is replaced as the king of the Tuahade by Briss, the half Amorian son of Eru and Ela. In the second battle, the Tuahade revolted against Brace, fighting against the Fomor. This battle sees Nua regain his kingship after being given a new hand. Baylor and Lu appear in this battle as well, with similar results. And that brings us to the end. I know this video was information dense, but hopefully it was interesting to you guys. My next video won't be Mabinogi related, so I just wanted to put this out as a little bit of a content snack for you all. Uh, while you wait on my next video, you can find me on Twitter at internet underscore effigy, and I'll have a link to my community Discord in the description below. I've got some channels in place for anyone to ask me any questions they may have, or suggest some topics for future videos. I hope to see you all there. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and if you learned something or just liked the video, please do the YouTube things and like, comment, and subscribe to see my future content. Everyone's support really means a lot to me as I work on building this channel.